Morning right, guys, um, just reading Glenn Gibson's comment around MGTOW. Uh, I have a different theory. I don't think MGTOW will grow much bigger than it is now. What will happen is that younger and younger men are going to aim to live in the expat life. Take me for example, I moved to the Philippines when I was only 42, which is young by expat standards. I think I was 34 myself, so similar. Uh, eventually going to see Western men in their 30s and even late 20s striving to live abroad in non-feminist nations. Being MGTOW in the West is just a miserable dead end unless you are rich or good looking and you can run through women like water. Um, now for me, I'll, you know what, I'll break some of this down. So the first thing is, I do think the expat stuff is actually uh, increased. Um, there's multiple reasons first one is infrastructure is constantly improving um like here i am in spain i think we can get a uh what's that five at least a 600 megabyte connection but i think we can even go up to one gig uh for internet uh, which is stupidly fast um i mean company i work for in the uk doesn't even have that for its own business for the whole building so never mind one user. Um, so infrastructure is changing in many places. The COVID stuff slowed things down, but the COVID things also had a push on remote working, home working, work away from the office if you can, and they push it as uh, for the COVID, environmental, anything to keep you out of the office. Um, at the same time, obviously, you're paying the electric bill, you're paying the gas office space is your house all this sort of stuff which does mean especially in your 20s a lot of you guys will still be at home uh in the sense of with your parents you could actually work remotely and good chance nobody would even notice um for you know when I've, we're not talking about going off to asia by the way we're talking about if you're heading out to say spain where you're only three hours away flight wise um so or you've got the mixed, which is you sort of can fly out on Friday afternoon and be back for Monday morning. Um, so there is a lot more opportunities definitely appearing. So I agree with that 100%. I also think people's perspectives have changed. I mean, the great resignation piece is a, an ideal example of the changes in mentality. Um, the, the US is currently experiencing quite large um, resignations. The UK has got it. And a lot of that will actually increase in January and February. Um, I'll, tell you that, I'll tell you that from my own perspective. Um, because at this time of year, finding another job uh, for what I do, because it's fairly specialist, is unlikely. They appear in February. Um, the reason being is companies generally disappear at Christmas. They, they ramp down because they're normally busy the rest of the year. So, right, recruitment and everything else just drops off. They just they'll go, oh, we'll pick it up in February. They might sign some contracts off to let agencies start recruiting, but I wouldn't expect to be really reviewed until February. So the great resignation is another example of why I think this is already occurring. You know, um, the opportunities to live abroad um, and also more flexible working because you may actually change jobs, not because of money, but to actually say, okay, I want to work less. I want a three-day week instead of five. You might want to go part-time, might be able to go and negotiate with your current company and say, you know what, don't want to be here all the time. Hate my job, whatever. Um, I'll do it part-time. Um, next bit. Eventually, you're going to see Western men in their 30s and even late 20s striving to live abroad in non-feminist nations. There's a conflict here. The first one is non-feminist nations are becoming feminist thanks to technology changes, um, changes towards religion, um, general beliefs, um, consumerism, and other factors that are spreading that much, much further than where it was, say, 10 years ago. Um, the market's changing. I mean, let's be honest, MGTOW, I don't remember hearing the, the phrase um, 10 years ago. So I would say, um, just be warned that attitudes that are changing it's a bit like in the philippines you will come across um people that make a career out of exploiting men um for 
oh, my dog's sick, my aunt's sick, I've had this, and they roam around the um, the websites, the dating websites, and exploit as much as they can. Um, that is part and parcel of the online dating scene. MGTOW, if you're looking in that similar direction and think, I'll do the online dating, be aware, these people are already exploiting. If that market increases, means more people will be in there exploiting it. Those, that's just a bit of grim reality. Um, but there is ways to to circumvent that as well. Um, but I do see the opportunities of working in Asia and whatever being there. Um, because you make money in the West and spend it in the East. Uh, you have more spending power, you have more flexibility because um, you may actually want to say take six months and do some training course or something else. Um, the point being is you then turn around and can advance your career, change direction, develop your business. A lot of the stuff that you can't really do in the West, um, because you get stuck into the grind of just going to work, paying your bills, um, because you end up with a lot more expenditure than you would, because uh, you may not need a car if you move to somewhere where you work for six months and then disappear again. But if you move back to, say, the UK, you rent an apartment, you start paying council tax, you buy a car to get to work and all that sort of stuff, your expenses start shooting up. So. I do agree, more people are certainly more switched on to it these days and will look look to uh, see more people overseas. And it's certainly happened since I did it, um, which is 2007, 2000, 2006, 2007. There's definitely been more and more people and younger people um, heading out to the Philippines and other places. Here in the matter, there's a lot of people that work remotely and a lot of people with their own companies that work remotely and work for other people. Um, so yeah, feminism, be aware that's expanding. That's not reducing. Um, it's not, don't assume just moving away. will get rid of all that problem that's driven with it. And to be fair, I have no issue with equal, true equality and I have no problem with people having opinions. It's just that some of the stuff that we're experiencing, it's a bit more down the lines of fascism. <laughs> Which is the which is the problem um, where people have a narrow-minded view and state it as a fact. Um, that's the scary bits because this is where things go completely crazy. Um, but the average man, for the average man who goes mig tower, this in the West, his life is going to be both sexless and loveless, sexless and loveless, and there's no way for most men to find happiness. Even sugar daddy websites, which are popular Western MGTOW, are under attack from the government. Never, to be fair, that's the first time I've heard of that term, so I can't really comment on the sugar daddy side. Um, but I would say it's much, much harder, definitely. You know, um, relationships are more complicated in the West. I find... In Asia, people are more approachable, you know, especially around relationships. Um, I think it's because people have more time for each other or make more time for each other. Um, and also, they're a bit more relaxed. <laughs> yeah, it does make a massive difference. Um, I don't think, you know, it's be end and end all because there's a lot of women I know um, that are unhappy. They would like to have a good partner and they would like this, you know. But I think one of the principal things I've noticed over the years is there's a lot of women want want to live their life exactly the way it is. There's no give and take. It's like, this is me, like it or lump it. I think that's one of the major issues. Um just just from what I observe myself with some people I actually know, um, that the the hour, you know, in the sense of um, that it's hours, the the hours, it's often, well, yeah, this is hours, but I still want my own space. I still want this. I want my own money. I want my own bank account. I want this. I want my own car. I want the. It, when you're down that route, that's two individuals living together. 
Um, and I think that's one of the big problems. I think it's the, how a lot of relationships are approached is 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 very key to whether a relationship it is a relationship or just a mutual agreement. <laughs> if it's a mutual agreement, then in many cases you may be better off single because you're just going to end up with a lot of headaches for very little benefit. Uh, you can see more and more expat videos on YouTube, and anyone with both their eyes open can see that expats are generally happier than most MGTOW men who are trapped in the West. I would agree. Um, and it's not, well, yeah, expats, yeah, because the bigger catchment of expats, that covers everybody, those that are married, unmarried, those that are financially stable, those that aren't financially stable. Um, it doesn't matter where they sort of sit where they are, you know, especially in the Philippines, I know it's a lot. Spain's a little bit more different. I do find there's a lot of whiny Brits in the in Spain. Um, but in the Philippines, I found that even people that were nearly down and out and pretty much broke were happier there than they would have been going back to the West. Um, and I think that's that speaks volumes. Now, don't get me wrong. The, somebody on, say, $300, $400 a month isn't living the dream. Um, but in the Philippines, they'll have a girlfriend, they'll have accommodation, they may have to eat rice and chicken every day, um, but they've got a roof over their head, they've got internet, they've got a stable income, even though it's very low, and they can sustain it. And their partner is not going to be whining about, I want a Mercedes this year, I want a bigger house, my sister's got a bigger house, can we have a bigger You Generally, from what I've experienced myself, you don't get any of that. Um, so fully understand it. Um, I'd say Glenn Gibson's on point on most of that. Um, so I can't really, you know, for me, I do think there's going to be more individualism. Um, but I think that's a better phrase for it. Where I think the MGTOW side, as I sort of discussed there, sort of not going to grow any bigger, but I, the expat community is going to grow bigger. But I'll, I'll say it's people being better informed. Because the MGTOW stuff, I hadn't heard of it, say, 10 years ago. Um, the expat stuff, I was pretty much um, an expat child. I, I lived overseas most of my childhood i lived in germany hong kong ireland and other places um but when i went to the philippines back in 2006 2007 it was like a spark had reignited because obviously i moved to the uk in 1989 because uh, my parents had, my father had retired from the armed forces um and then it was very, it just wasn't me. You know, I'm used to traveling, experiencing stuff, and the mentality is very different. So when I sort of got locked into the day-to-day, -day, this is why a normal day-to-day -day job is, is quite painful for me. That's why I like three-month contracts and out and then back in for another one for three months because you've got that ability to finish out the country, go and do something for a few months, come back, do another three months. Because that's, you know, that's the lifestyle I like. You know, I like the ability. It's like here we are in Spain. Um, now the house is purchased and what have you. We're now looking at an environment where hopping in and out of the UK once the COVID scenario slows down, I'll be doing it every, every fortnight. You know, I'll be coming home regularly. Now, don't get me wrong, I want to be traveling further afield later on, but I've got to get some of my uh, cash objectives in, in place before I can withdraw from work. Um, but ultimately, that's the sort of scenario you'd be looking at. You've got a bigger perspective. Now, I don't think everybody's going to end up, um, like for the MGTOW, where everyone's going to end up single, or they're going to end up, um, you know, down some mutual agreement, whether that's financial or something else or something. I think there will be a lot of people that will become expats 
and get in relationships. You get married, settle down. Um, and not all relationships are great, but it'd be interesting to see the statistics against um, a Western couple compared to, say, a Western guy and somebody from the Philippines, Thailand, or whatever, and do a comparison on both of those to see what the difference is on divorce rates, etc. Because I know from my own uh, network, the divorce rate um, between people I know and Filipinas is virtually nil. That's 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 a lot. <laughs> when you compare that to say the UK, I think the average is what fifty percent, fifty percent divorce rates. And then you compare that to people that are happily married. And I'd say a lot of it is down to there's a bit of traditional life in there. You know, me, I'm the breadwinner, go out and make the money. My wife's happy being the homemaker and doing that piece. Once the kids are a bit older, we start traveling around. Um, but I've already covered a lot of these topics a long time ago. My, my lifestyle hasn't really changed in the sense of how me and my wife are. Um, it's just where we are. Um, but reality is we're happily married. So not everything is about only you completely independent, going to be lonely. A lot of it is you've got to gauge where you want to be, um, and what you want to achieve. Cause one of the things I don't like is being stuck in one place. I like to travel, you know, I like having the ability to go. We've got property in the Philippines, although my roof is missing at the moment. Um, I like the, the fact that I can look at things and think I'm not locked into this forever. And I think that is a key point of the expat lifestyle and the MGTOW thing is the flexibility to do something else, which is the key, key elements is the ability to actually make a change, the ability to steer the ship in whatever direction you want it to go. Um, so yeah, I think that's, uh, I think that's that topic covered. Thanks for watching.